stop just in time. Idiot. Plato. I know all about Plato. He was a Greek, principally concerned with the difference between appearance and reality, the endless search of man for his true identity. Look at him go. Every time that crummy bell rings, it's a wonder they aren't punchy. You ever seen a punch drunk co-ed? Women, they study Freud, Marx, and T.S. Eliot and end up standing over a hot stove wishing they looked like Princess Grace. I can't imagine her standing over a hot stove. Well, let's talk about Princess Grace. Get lost. Well, let's talk about the symposium. That's all about love. Love is a serious subject. I tell you, you meet me at the amphitheater at 3.30 and we'll have a serious discussion, okay? I bet you have all the answers. I'm working at it. Lots of luck. Don't forget, 3.30. Look for me when you see me. Hey, wait. You didn't even tell me your name. I said, draw what you see. Nice going. It's not so tough. What is that, Zawatsky? A female fullback? Whistler's mother? Satisfied with that? Now you have a good sense of line, sister. You know what your trouble is, Tony? You have a dirty mind. I wish I could do the female figure as well. well. It's not right. I know what I want, but I can't get it on the paper. Most people are too inhibited for the subject. Well, I must be some sort of a primitive. A primitive is a warrior, a hunter, an artist. That's why Gauguin went to Tahiti, to get away from the corruption of civilization. I hear they have jet service there now. And they've spoiled everything. But the insects are winning. Huh? The insects. They multiply every day by the millions. Hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee with me? Oh, no, thanks, Karen. Not now. With your enthusiasm, they're bound to win. Modern man will be obsolete. I'm sorry about being late, sir, but there was a traffic jam. Spare me the alibi. I'm sure it's a gasser. Yes, sir. Believe it or not, I have a fellowship for somebody in this class. A fellowship? Oh, it isn't as grand as it sounds. All it means is you'll have another year of school after you graduate this year. A whole year, just to paint and work with me. Well, you know I'd like nothing better in the world, but my parents can't afford it. I'm gonna have to get a job as soon as I graduate. There's a grant of money. It isn't much, but a single guy ought to be able to make it. Oh, you know I have the draft to sweat. That army's gonna grab me as soon as I get out. The fellowship will give you a deferment. I'm not sure I'm good enough. Are you interested? What's the catch? Well, you've got to graduate. You've got to get at least a passing grade in all your other courses. All my courses? That's the deal. Look, you think it over, Eddie. If you're really interested... I'm interested. Don't forget to lock up.
castle stay. Oh, what a rogue and cousin slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here is but a fiction in a dream of passion? Hey, wait for me. You said 3.30. Yeah, I know, but I don't have a watch, see? I don't know why I waited. Well, why did you? Perhaps I was curious. Well, my teacher kept me after class. I told him I had an appointment, but uh, you know how it goes. And you knew I'd be waiting. I'd find you if you weren't. There are over 20,000 students in this university. But only 7,000 are girls. Where would you begin? Well, let's see. Practical shoes, sensible clothes, simple hairdo, definitely not the raw, raw type. You're doing something constructive. Am I warm? I'd give you a C, or maybe a C plus. Education. You're a school teacher type. What's your name? Pam. Pam. I like it. It suits me. Have you ever wanted to be somebody else? No. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Take me now. I've always wanted to be Picasso, Lord Byron, John Glenn, Richard the Lionhearted, and uh, Lawrence of Arabia, just to mention a few. But you can't be all of them. Well, sure I can. I get tired of being one. Then I move on to the rest. Now then, who do you want to be? Pam. Nobody different. Oh, come on. Admit it. Haven't you ever in your life wanted to be somebody else? Well... Be honest. You laugh. I'm not laughing. Well, sometimes I like to see myself as a beautiful lady with sad, mysterious eyes and very expensive clothes and lots and lots of secrets and at least one great big tragedy. I'd have an exotic name like Silvano, or Monique, or Bridget. And that's pretty silly, isn't it? I don't think it's silly at all. You wouldn't. I'm glad you waited for me. Come on, Savannah. There's a great big world out there waiting just for us. What'll I do with these? Let him go. Just like that? Just like that. to get these brakes fixed. Morning, noon, and night. One thing on your mind, one thing only, that's all. One thing only? That... What are you talking about? You... She locked herself in the bathroom again. Deborah, why do you have to act that way? Oh, boy. She likes African violets, ranch-style houses with sliding glass doors and barbecue pits. You probably even like the atomic bomb. We're actually one great big happy family here. What am I supposed to be, a monk all my life? It's all right, Debbie, I'm home. What's wrong with African violets? He asked me to help him with his anthropology, and then he acts like a knee... Knee, knee, knee Neanderthal. How are you going to help me if you can't even pronounce Neanderthal? Oh. Oh. Hi, I'm Debbie. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Pam. Oh, hi. I'm, I'm Terry. Hi. Hi. You look like a nice girl. How'd he get you here, Hypnosis? Well, he says that Terry is a real gourmet cook. Son of a gun. 
Nobody ever shot a cook. One of my brothers had the same idea, and he was wounded twice in Korea. Deborah, please don't talk about the army, huh? Because when you do, you know what I see. Yeah, longest day. No, oh, from here to eternity. Oh, here we go with the late, late show again. Big fat sergeant. Yeah, fat sergeant. Yeah, that's him. That's your jet, straight from Dog Patch, USA. He's got an IQ of 80 on a good day. Stripes all over his arm, chews tobacco, hates college kids. He isn't in the army because he's lazy, no, so he likes it, yeah. Hey, how about that gourmet dinner? Yeah, how about that, Eddie? Did you pick up the groceries, huh? I was going to, but I ran into this wonderful old balloon man. He... Mm hmm And you never can resist a balloon man. Well... Never fear, there's always spaghetti a la tarragou. I wasn't an Eagle Scout for nothing. Welcome to the campus zoo, Pam. Tarragou, when it comes to spaghetti, you're a genius. Hmm. Junior, you have found yourself a very special girl. Hmm. Well, what does that make me, an old shoe? Yeah. Oh, hmm. yeah. This is the way. Now is the time for wine and candlelight and soft music. Hey, Romeo, come here. Terragoo is tone deaf, but he's got one of the world's greatest record collections. He's got everything from the sounds of Sebring to the Gregorian chants. What would you like to hear? Is that supposed to be a self-portrait? Yep. Oh, but it's terribly gloomy, like the end of the world. Well, haven't you ever had any moods? What kind of name is Tagu supposed to be? His real name is William Aloysius Schoonmaker III. I think I like Tagu better. Come on, let's clean up. Hey, when's the last time you cleaned up? Well, it's the maid's day off. What are you going to do? Oh, no, you don't. You always have to behave like a game warden. Maybe I do. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I want to see a ring on my finger and a license in my hand. We could always get engaged. Engaged? Half the girls in the university get engaged. Yeah, that's the thing to do. Yep, and then at the end of the year, he comes along and says, see you later, doll. Well, a guy's got to find himself. But I don't want to find anything. I just want you. If I didn't know you better, I might believe you. Besides, if you don't start studying, you're going to wind up in the army. Never happened. I'm a scholar by temperament. You're a scholastic bum. You've been in and out of four colleges. Well, only the best colleges. Besides, I'm searching for something. Truth, wisdom, the meaning of life. Why don't you give up all this nonsense and get a job? I like the academic life. But there's the bitter end. You get up in the morning, you growl at your wife, you run for the 803 commuter trade, you, you, you got ulcers, mortgages, payments. The grapes of wrath? The man in the gray flannel suit.
Máximo. ¡Ole! Before the Roman Republic could be secure, it was necessary for Rome to subdue the entire Italian peninsula. Now, this was done in three stages. One, the conquest of southern Italy. Two, the conquest of Sicily. Three, the conquest of the Po Valley. Mr. Slocum? Slocum. Slocum! The Po Valley is situated along the Po River, one of the chief sources of hydroelectric power. During the Second World War, the scene of a number of battles and intense partisan activity. <laughs> I suppose this represents the spirit of the ancient Roman Republic. <laughs> no, sir, it's just a pretty girl. Just a pretty girl? You don't mean that, do you, Slocum? If you mean, do I like pretty girls, the answer is yes, sir. <laughs> Nothing is just one thing or another, Slocum. Careless generalizations are very dangerous in the study of history. Why do you bother to attend my class, Mr. Slocum? You know, there are a lot of young people who'd give anything to have the chance you've got. When I was your age, if I wanted to go to a university, I had to sweat. Isn't class over, sir? I mean, the Depression is like ancient history. I suppose it is to you. Well, I've read all about it. Hoobersville, bread lines, bankers jumping out of windows, college professors selling apples on the street. Times change, sir. That's true. And we're all a little contemptuous of things we don't understand. But I don't have to accept the insolence of second-rate students. Goodbye, Mr. Slocum. Sir? You're out. I'm dropping you from my course. I'll see the rest of you tomorrow.
you ever play baseball, sir? You've got a pretty good arm. Hi, Eddie. Oh, hi, Karen. Who's ahead today, the insects? You look so gloomy. What's wrong? Well, the stock market went down again. In a capitalistic society, the businessman is the only hero. Freud proved that the acquisitive instinct is so related to virility. Well, buy me a cup of coffee and I'll tell you what's wrong with Freud. But he did and? prove that modern man asserts his virility with the paycheck. You ran off and left me last night. You'll get over it in time. We were just discussing the virility of modern man. Will you have a cup of coffee with me? I've got a class. Oh, I almost forgot. So do I. Hi, Karen. Hey, catch. Well, I wasn't in a very Freudian mood anyway. Do you really have a class? I'm afraid so. You just got me kicked out of one of mine. I was drawing a picture of you. How did you draw me? Well, let's play hooky, and I'll show you. I haven't deliberately caught a class in ages. What's 50 minutes out of a lifetime? How can I argue with a man who doesn't even own a watch? I feel kind of guilty about cutting class. If I had sense enough to cut Schwartz's class, I wouldn't be in trouble now. You know, somehow, I can't picture you as a school teacher, filling out report cards, teaching little brats how to do long division. You'll be bored to death. Nonsense. Well, at least you're different. Most girls around here are just looking for a husband. Tell me, Eddie, what would you do if you could do anything you wanted? Well, if I didn't have the army to worry about, maybe I'd get a job on a boat, travel around, see things. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. I just want to know. I want to be sure. Is that so crazy? People in hell want ice cream cones, too, don't they? Boy, I'm glad you're not my teacher. I just hope I don't have too many students like you. Well, thanks a lot. Are these all supposed to be me? Well, you're a very difficult subject. Which one do you like best? I like you the best. You just don't know how to be serious, do you? Tell me all my faults. Well, first of all, you need a haircut. Morning. I didn't hear you come in last night. I got home late. I went to the beach this time of year. Oh, well, 
A bunch of us went over in that crazy old car of Terragoose, and we built a fire and sat around and talked, and on the way back, the car broke down. I like Eddie. He's a very attractive boy. Are you trying to push me off on the first attractive man that comes along? <laughs> I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Oh! Coming! Aren't you going to have your breakfast? No, I can't. I can't keep Eddie waiting. Bye-bye. Bye, darling. Is that you, Slocum, or do I need a pair of glasses, too? May I talk to you, sir? I didn't expect to see you back. I just came back to apologize. I wanted to say I was sorry for the way I acted. I don't blame you for kicking me out. What would you do in my shoes? All right. Let's say I'm a full professor. I could get a job in any university in the country, but they want me here. I guess that means a guy like Slocum is expendable. Agreed. But he's a senior. It would be a shame if he got this far and didn't graduate. Maybe I'd give him a chance. If you can reach a guy like Slocum, if you can reach just one. The lost sheep. Oh, yes, the lonely crowd. The one man lost among the status seekers. And the population explosion has made everything so competitive. Yes, sir. Do you really think you can win that fellowship? I don't know. All I know is I can pass this course. Slocum, you're the most infuriating kind of student a teacher can have. You're bright and quick and you've got potential. But every time you get right down to the wire, you cop out. You don't give a damn. I care. I learned a long time ago not to count on the lost sheep. They'll let you down every time. All right, you've got your chance. Go find yourself a seat. Slocum. I hear things are so tough out there that people have to stand in line for everything. Now then, today we take up the causes for the decline of the Roman Empire. We must remember that Rome was still young. Lacking experience and a sense of social responsibility, the Romans were unprepared to deal with the Oriental mind. <laughs>
No. <sighs> oh, what a crummy flick. Oh, I've seen it already anyway. So have I, twice. And it was crummy the first time. Eddie, take me home. In other words, don't touch me. I'm a nice girl. Take me home, Eddie. All right. Pam, I'm sorry about the way I acted. Well, you just didn't pick the right girl this time, that's all. Look, I said I was sorry. What do I have to do, stand on my head? Are you going to take me home now or not? Suit yourself. Okay, tunes of glory, let's get going. When are you going to start living the same century as everybody else? What do you want me to do? Put on a black leather jacket, muss up my hair, and act like an ape? No, I just wonder why you don't like ordinary cars, ones that run. I may end up living with the chrome and a set of tail fins, but not yet. What's wrong with tail fins? Oh, hi, Eddie. Good uh, morning. What's wrong with him? Uh, he's having a mood. He was up all night working on one of those uh, gloomy self-portraits. Did he and Pam have a fight? Yeah, I guess so. I hope it wasn't serious. I like Pam. She's a special girl. Now, you're kind of special, too, you know Start that? Start the car. Oh, I hate to see you get taken to the cleaners every time. This car was a bargain. I was almost embarrassed to take it. Have you looked under the hood? No. You've got old-timey, large displacement, long-stroke L-heads. It's got positive action and sensitive steering. And that rinky-dink triangular drive chain system connecting the gam shaft and the generator shaft? That went out with the chariots and Cleopatra. Then her. Where did you find out about this model? My dad had one just like it on the lot. A real lemon. Uh, he was going to cannibalize it for some parts until he unloaded it on some... some clown from the university. I know you're dead. I, I bought this from a great big tall guy with a mustache. Did they call him happy? Yeah, something like that. I knew it. That was Happy Henry, my brother. He'll sell you a second-hand washing machine and make you think you're getting a Jaguar. Well, you gotta admit it's got personality. Good. Mark, you'll never be finished before the period's over, so hurry up. Very good, then. Pam. Go away. You're being graded on this. I want to talk to you. I want to explain. After last night, I felt so bad I couldn't sleep. I can't talk to you anymore. Meet me later at the amphitheater. Please.
When I was a child, my father used to bring me here. We'd pretend that the beach was the whole wide world and that we were the only people in it. Those rocks over there, I'd be an enchanted castle, away from everything, and I'd be a princess. All you needed was a prince. What would you do if you saw a dragon right now? Well, now, you got to understand about dragons. Underneath, they're very shy. That's why you don't see too many of them. Oh. Oh, Eddie, I wish everything would stop and stand still and be just the way it is now, always. What do you wish? You know, I wish for what I always wish for, just to be Eddie with Pam. What's new? You really want to know, Eddie? Well, don't act so mysterious. This will interest you, friend. Wait till you're here. Greetings. From the President of the United States. You have been selected by your friends and neighbors on the local draft board. You will report for induction within 60 days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's bound to happen. Let's go to the kitchen and finish up. I'm sorry, Debbie. It says here that you can appeal. Sick of it. You have to beg. You have to lie. They make you feel like a coward. 
And the four feathers? Everybody said that guy was a coward, too. See Aubrey Smith and all that crowd. <laughs> well, he showed him. He must have killed about a million fuzzy wuzzies. You could flunk the physical. What kind of a crack is that? I'm a perfect physical specimen, 1A, all the way. Well, I, I suppose they'll send you overseas. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what happens when a guy gets over there? He gets gets lonesome and meets all those foreign girls and well, you never know where it may lead. With your luck, you'll end up in Nome, Alaska. Never. We uh, we have such a short time left, and then two years, two long years with nothing but memories. Oh, here we go with that one last night to remember, Jazz. Oh, boy. Oh, there are millions of girls in this world. Tall ones, short ones, fat ones, skinny ones, every kind of chicky baby can think of, and I gotta get hooked on a... On a, a what? On a, pro on a professional virgin, that's what. Oh. <laughs> well, things are different in civilized countries, like in Europe. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet Bridget Bardot doesn't make a federal case out of it when some guy likes her, huh? And in Sweden, oh, boy... Let me tell you something, William, Aloysius schoonmaker. My mother went tripping down the aisle three times like a blushing bride. We're not discussing your mother. I'm going to make that trip once, one time. Okay. When I put on a white wedding gown, it's going to mean something. Hello. Huh? Just a minute. Hello, Dad? Oh, yeah. Fine, thanks, sir. Just fine. Yeah. In the bathroom. Oh. No, sir, well, we, we don't have a phone in the bathroom. We just got a long court. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I, I am a little short this month. I had these repairs. Oh, oh, oh no, no, Dad. It's, it, it's a great car. It's a real beautiful car. Really, uh, it's a bargain. Where do you see it? Uh... Dad, um, I got a little surprise in the mail today. I got drafted. Well, sure they can draft me out of college. You get, well, you, you gotta be in the upper half of their class to get deferred. Well, I've been taking a lot of tough courses. Well, there's uh, art appreciation and anthropology and uh, French poetry. Well, it is practical. What, what if I have to write a French poem sometime, huh? I've been doing the best I can, Dad. Dad, uh, do you have any friends on the draft board? Oh, no. No, 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 sir. No, no, no sir. I'm, I'm not trying to dodge a draft. Uh-uh. No, I'd just like to finish school first because otherwise, you know, it's two years down the drain. I guess it does serve me right, but you know, maybe the army will shape me up. But, but... Yeah, plenty, of, plenty of exercise, fresh air, yeah, good wholesome chai. Yeah. Dad, you sure you don't know anybody on the draft board? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know the schoolmakers have always proudly served the nation in peace and war. Yeah. All right. Give my love to mother, huh? And, uh, and don't, don't tell her yet. Uh, yeah. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Taragoo. Happy birthday to you. I love all you wonderful, crazy people. Thanks. Oh, don't thank us. It was all Debbie's idea. Deborah? About what I said, yeah, you know? 
I hope you forgive me. Blow out the candles, birthday boy. You know something? My old man was so busy chewing me out, he forgot it was my birthday. you're not going to be drafted. So am I. I'm going to be very selfish about you, you know. You're stuck with me. Oh, Eddie, I love you. I love you so much, and I'm so glad I'm not going to lose Shh, you. quiet. I don't have to be quiet. My aunt's in the hospital, and my mother's staying with the children. What do you think? Hey, I need a towel. Good morning. Koko-san need new kimono, so... Ah, so honorable lord and master. When I am rich and famous, I buy Koko-san many new kimonos of finest silk. We live on a little house near Mount Fuji. Oh, you make unworthy servants so happy. Breakfast. Lord and master are starving. How many pancakes do you make? Pancakes? If I eat pancakes, I'll get big and fat and none of the other girls will like me. What are the girls? You know, that's funny. I can't think of any either. Hey, hurry up, we're gonna be late. Oh, who cares about ancient history? You're not past that course if it kills both of us. In that case, I'm gone. Hey, boy, get with it. Huh. Morning, Mrs. Burns. I just stopped by to pick up some notes from Pam. She's so neat and organized, you know, I can't make any sense out of mine. Just doodles and everything. If I graduate, it'll all be Pam. She's always been good at school. Yes, ma'am. Well, I gotta go. Well, don't let me hold you up. Bye. Good morning. How's Aunt Ellen? She's going to be all right. Good. I passed Eddie on the stairs. Oh, he came by to borrow a book this morning. I asked him to stay for breakfast, but you know how Eddie is. He's always late and in a hurry. He said he came to borrow some notes. Oh, I guess it was some notes. Please don't say anything. Don't say a thing. You love him very much, don't you? Yes. Does he love you? Yes, I think so. Are you sure? Sure? How can I be sure? Eddie isn't even... Eddie isn't even sure of himself yet. When you're in love, you're never sure. Eddie needs me. I know he needs me. And we're right together. You don't know that, Pam. Well, I'm not going to spend my life being an old maid school teacher filling out report cards and 
wasting my life away. Sleeping with him isn't the answer. Mother, he's the only man I've ever loved, and I'll never love anybody else again. Oh, you're so much like your father, proud and impulsive and full of love. It's a wonderful way to be, but it leaves you vulnerable. Did you ever sleep with father before you were married? You don't, and you never will have the right to say that to me. I'm sorry. Oh, your father was a man, a man who cared passionately about life. When we met... There was a war on. I followed him from one dreary place to another, on crowded trains and buses and dirty little rooms, because I loved him and he needed me. But you came back and you started a beautiful life together. It was a different world. It's always different. Oh, Pam, life is so long. So much longer than you think right now. I'm not going to lose Eddie. I know so much better than you what it is to want a man, to love him, and to lose him. I've got a class now. Pam, love is... it's sharing, it's, it's accepting, even suffering. Mother, I've got to go now. Love is so much more than sex. Is that all you think it is with us? Pam, I just want so much. So very much for you. I'm sorry I'm late. I was supposed to be in the library. I hated meeting like this. It's better than sitting in the movies. Your mother must still think I'm some sort of a monster. Well, we form kind of an agreement, like a truce. We just don't bring it up anymore. Like I just don't exist or something? Sooner or later, she'll accept the fact I'm not a child. Debbie and Tara are over at my place. Where should we go? Rome? Paris? Madrid? There's always the flicks. Will the Indians capture the wagon train? Maybe this time they will. The beach is beautiful at night. It's too far. I know of a place. All right. Hold the key, will you? It may not be the best car in the world, but... Gary Grant would give anything to own it. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. I was wondering, how much is a room? For a double? Well, yes, ma'am. For me and my wife. Eight dollars. Oh, well, you sign for both, you and your wife. Have you got any luggage? No, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, but I can't make change. That's all right. She cheated you. Yes, I know. Well, you're not going to let her get away with that, are you? It's all right.
Not bad, is it? Have you ever been here before? What? Have you ever been here before with anybody else? Well, that's not a very nice question. Don't you want to go out and get a bottle? Now, look, if you're going to be that way about it... Well, that's what they do, isn't it? I mean, they go out and get a bottle and then they get drunk? Oh, Pam! Aren't you going to take your clothes off? Well, aren't you going to get undressed or do you want me to do it first? Look, I think we'd better forget about the whole thing. This is what you wanted, isn't it? You planned it this way. Nobody twisted your arm. I didn't exactly kidnap you. You wanted to come here as much as I did. So now you're calling me a whore. Oh, Pam. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? You're calling me a whore and you're thinking you it. You said it, I didn't. <coughs> you're just a scared, spoiled little girl. You don't know who you are or what you want. Something's wrong with the car. It feels like a flat tire. No, it's in the engine. Well, you better call a garage. I just blew ten bucks on a motel room, and now you want me to spend more. I don't want you to do anything. I don't care what you do. Get the manual out of the glove box, will you? Well, you can do that, can't you? Look. All right. Say I told you so. Now, where are the tools? Ah, oh, Teragu's made a big mess out of everything. You might try reading the manual first. You're so smart, you go ahead and read it. In case of tire trouble, do not run with the tire flat, for the carcass will be mashed between the steel rim and the road. Give me that. Close interchangeability and continued efficiency are best... Hey, come back here! Terrigo. Yep. I can just see his face. Well, old buddy, your car is like drowned. <laughs> well, Debbie will probably give you a medal. She'll be charmed out of her mind.
You've got an awfully dirty face, you know. Come in, come in. The door's open. Walk right in. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I brought some stuff for you to look at. Come on in, Eddie. Sorry I sounded so gruff. I didn't know who it was. Night's the only time there's any peace around here. Say, this is really something, seeing all your work spread out like this. I like it. I'm trying to get ready for a show. They're giving me a one-man show in Dallas first of the year. That's great. Yeah, it's a break. Maybe we'll make enough to buy a new used car. I bet you've got a lot of problems. There's no romance in starving in a garret. Besides, I don't believe in birth control. I guess teaching and painting at the same time is pretty rough. That's right, Eddie. Until somebody comes along with a great big answer, I might as well just make the best of it. Got any great big answers, Eddie? Oh, by the way, I saw Schwartz today. I think you surprised him, but it all depends on that exam. Well, he'll probably flunk me anyway for the hell of it. You'll get whatever you deserve. Schwartz is a pro. The rest of us come and go, but there wouldn't be any university without men like him. Eddie? Bear down. Don't flunk that exam. Am I interrupting anything? Mary! Hi, Eddie. Hi. I came by to bring you some coffee. Eddie brought us some of his work for me to see. Oh. Stick around. I can't. The babysitter will have a fit. Let her. Well, it's nice to see a picture of something for a change. I love Jack's work, but I haven't got a clue. All you got to do is appreciate. I remember when you did pictures like this of me. Stop it, Mary. You make me sound like Methuselah. Oh, uh, have a sandwich, Eddie. Oh, no thanks. I really have to run. Okay, but leave your work. I want to take a good look at it. Good night. Good night, good Eddie. Night. He really loves her. You can see that. Never mind about his sex life. <laughs> I'm afraid you weren't going to make it. Well, I do have to get rolling before it gets dark. Do you have to go? My dad's a big kid about Christmas. He'd never understand it if I didn't come home. I'm going to miss you very much. Me too. I'd like to meet your family. Well, my folks are just plain, ordinary people. Have you told them about us yet? No, it's not the right time. They've got a lot of worries now. And they want me to graduate, you know. This is our first Christmas together. Please don't go. Oh, Pam, it's not as though we were married or something. No, it isn't. Boy, I can just see it if I came to your house for Christmas dinner. <laughs> the three of us sitting at that long table with long faces. Your mother would probably carve me instead of the turkey. I'd be about as welcome as Scrooge. Pam, is something wrong? No, I... I'm just disappointed about your leaving. I don't like it any better than you do. Oh, here. It's ticking. Uh-huh. It's waterproof and shockproof and... Uh... Self-winding? Yes. <laughs> and it's got your name engraved, in case you lose it. Well, now, I told them this was for a lady, a very special lady. 
with sad and beautiful eyes and lots and lots of secrets. Do I have to wait until Christmas? Well, everybody else does. I do have to go now. Eddie? Hurry up or you'll be late. Have a wonderful Christmas. Same to you. I have to run. Your breakfast is in the oven. Thank you. That's a beautiful robe. Eddie gave it to me for Christmas. Looks very expensive. Well, you know Eddie. He's the last of the big spenders. Yes, I know. Well, have a good day. Mother. I love you. I know. I love you. Don't ever leave me again, Eddie. Don't ever leave me again. Hey, don't you people believe in electricity? I thought everybody deserted me. In the kitchen, Doc. Time is running out for me. I'm a condemned man. Hey, well, Rick, you got it. Yeah. In the bathtub. Cold. Yeah, put it in there. Since nobody else is going to give me a farewell party, I decided to give myself one. For the peasant's beer, for us? Huh? Sure. Oh, man, balloons, great. D Listen, blow them up. I want a beautiful world Got of balloons. Got the book. Rick, come in. Get on air and call every ship you babe in the town you know. Right. Oh, look, put it on the top. Hey, this is working on Hi, Terrica. I brought the camera. And I'm just loaded with film. You're loaded, honey. Listen, I want you to take a picture of everybody. Eddie, couldn't we go somewhere and be alone? Well, I can't leave Terrigo's party. I'd like to talk to you. Hey, Eddie. It'll keep, boy. Boy, if there's anything I hate, it's a farewell party. Frankly, my dear Scarlett, I don't give a damn. Yeah, hey, Terrible. Let's have a hook, Mammy. Okay, Amos, get over there and fruit. No, this isn't a party. It's a national disaster. Can you imagine anyone dumb enough to draft Terrible? He'll set back the whole defense program. He can't even sew on a button. Are you all right, Pam? I'm fine. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's all right. I just wanted to bring back your French poetry. Well, great. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Hey. Oh. No, he, he thinks I'm a prude. I, I don't think I am. I mean, I, I know if, if you love somebody, you want them. It's the most natural thing in the world. But I do. I do want him. It's just that 
Well, I want so much more than that. I want him for richer, for poor, in sickness and health, the whole bit. Maybe I am a prude. Maybe if I, if I loved him enough, I forget about all that. you more than it's going to hurt me. <laughs> hey, come on, bear the lights, come here. Excuse me, please. Hot. Got enough beer here for an army. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that word. They got me, that's all there is to it. I'm, I'm like immune. I don't want you to go. Well, basic training doesn't last long, then maybe, maybe I can get a furlough, huh? I've been worrying about you the whole time. Hey, listen to that trip. The army's the safest place in the world. All they do is march around and shine shoes and things. And, and... Two years is such a long time. Yeah, you'll probably meet some suave guy, handsome, successful debonair. What about all those exotic foreign girls? Don't you trust me? <laughs> well, it's a great party, Terrigo. Thanks, I'm glad you could come. Terrigo, let's go somewhere and be alone together. I want to, I really do. Mm. Two years is such a long time to wait. I thought all you guys come on, the party's in the other room. Come on, hey, live it up. Live it up. Go ahead, take a beer. Go ahead. See you later. You... You mean... That's exactly what I mean. How, how would we get away without somebody noticing, huh? I don't care. I love you. I'm not ashamed. Remember when... Remember when Vivian Lee jumped off a of Waterloo Bridge? She didn't jump off any bridge. Well, it was tragic anyway. Oh, Terrigal, this is life. I'm talking about us. I'm serious. So am I. Why spoil a beautiful frustration? Hey, let's have a hoop now. Get lost. Life is a long series of farewell parties. You know, I've always liked Eddie. He's a cute boy. Young, but cute. He'll make somebody a pretty good husband once he gets house trained. House trained? I can't imagine Eddie house trained. Eddie's gotta be. They all do. How? Honey, if you want him bad enough, make him marry you. You make it sound so simple. Oh, don't be naive. Hi, Eddie. You learn to do the Watusi? Oh, no, thanks. Maybe later. I'll take care of myself, all right? You want to dance? No, I don't feel like dancing. What's wrong? Nothing. Come on, tell me. I was just thinking, Eddie. We ought to get married. Tonight? Why not? Well, you know how the young married couples around here have to live, like a a bunch of gypsies. Well, haven't you ever wanted to be a gypsy? Travel around and tell fortunes and build campfires and dance? Well, we couldn't get married now even if we wanted to. Well, I've got the fellowship. We both have to finish school. There's still the army ahead of me. What if I were pregnant? Get serious. 
answer me. What would you do? Pam, are you pregnant? Yes or no? You're drunk. wanted to do that. Look, if you're trying to play some sort of a joke on me, forget about it. I'd like to talk to Dr. Shoemaker, please. Do you have an appointment? No. Jane Snyder recommended him to me. Would you tell him that, please? Would you please take a seat? Thank you. You can go right in. Burns, come in for you. Sit down. Thank you. How's Jane these days? Well, she's fine, I guess. She looks fine. Last time I saw her, she was talking about dyeing her hair. Is she still a blonde? Blonde? I didn't know Jane was ever a blonde. She's worried about her weight, too. I wanted to go on a crash diet. Jane's always been thin. How long have you been pregnant? Two months. What about the father? He's away. Have you told him? Not yet. Oh. I can't. He's married and he's got a family and everything, and I've caused enough trouble already. And so you want to pretend that it never happened? Yes. I need your help. Premarital sexual intercourse is frowned on in this society. Even though it seems to be widely practiced. There's not much I can do to help you. I can't even offer you sympathy. These days, there's no excuse for the trouble you're in. Jane said that you might know someone. I know lots of people. That you might know the name of someone. It's possible I might know someone who'd be sympathetic to your problem. But I think you should know there are always consequences, psychological as well as physical. There are always risks. I understand that, but... You've got to be sure. Now, I suggest that you think it over very carefully. And then if you decide there's no other solution, let me know. Well, how much do I owe you? I brought a good deal of money along. Oh, I haven't done anything. We just had a talk about a mutual friend. I might say this, though. You're going to find this whole process rather expensive. If you decide you need help, let me know. Thank you. Any day except Wednesdays. I play golf on Wednesday.
Phone, Eddie. Let it ring. Hello. Just a minute. It's Pam. Tell her I'm studying. Now you tell her. Yeah? Well, Pam, I've got an exam. Pam. What time? All right, I'll be there. What did she say? How can I concentrate with all these interruptions? Let's burn ancient history. Hmm. Hey, that's my book. Why don't you join the army? You don't have to read books in the army. Because I didn't come to college just to cop out, to keep from getting a job or dodge the draft. Just what are you dodging, Eddie? Boy, I'm getting sick of you. I'm getting sick of your vintage cars and your gourmet cooking and your crummy old movies. Wake up, Junior. You're dreaming. Watch it. Yeah, beat Nick funny. You're not even a phony. You're a pseudo. You're nothing. You're nothing but a stupid clown. Well, I'd rather be a clown than a hypocrite. You Shut got up. a girl in trouble and you haven't even got the guts. That's to none of your out. damn business. No, let Pam worry about it, huh? Look, I don't even know if she's pregnant. All I know is she keeps bugging me and clinging on to me. Why can't everybody just leave me alone? Because you're cheating. <laughs> You know what you just did? You hit an unarmed man. Uh, an unarmed man. That's what a friend is. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. How about you? Take a look at yourself, Eddie. I was afraid you weren't coming. I've got to take my history exam in a few minutes. I had to talk to you. I'm a regular walking encyclopedia of ancient history. I've memorized every date and every fact from the Punic Wars to the fall of Rome. Go ahead, ask me anything. I know. I should have called. This wasn't something we could talk on the phone, Eddie. I'm sorry about what happened at the party. Are you sure you're pregnant? Yes. Sometimes people just think they are. You know, it's psychological. I'm quite sure. Does your mother know? No. I don't want to hurt her. She trusted me. I just don't want to hurt her. What are you going to do? What do you want me to do? Everything was just great until this happened. Yes, it was, wasn't it? There's got to be something we can do. There is. What? You're grown up. You know. That's too dangerous. It's expensive, too. I don't know how to begin to tell my folks about this. I'm not asking you for money. I don't want to be responsible for anything like that. I 
But you haven't come up with any other ideas, Eddie. Well, give me a chance, will you? I can't even think. I'm not going to make you marry me. What are you going to do, get some other guy? Sorry. I didn't mean that. I'm just very worried. If you really are pregnant, I'll marry you. That's what you want, isn't it? Look, meet me here after my exam and we'll work something out. Wish me luck. Good luck, Eddie. take your final examinations in ancient history. The examinations will be graded on a curve. If you will open your blue books, you will see the question written inside. But do not begin. I will read the question so that there's no mistake. When Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon in 49 BC, he was an individual involved in a particular isolated event. Yet the expression crossing the Rubicon has come to mean much more. It has been said that at that moment, all the past history of Rome ended and the future was determined. Thus, a single act becomes part of an enormous cumulative pattern of events, which we call history. Discuss, unquote. Any questions? You have three hours. Begin. Finding it difficult, Mr. Slocum? Finished so soon? It isn't any use. That's too bad, having come so far. I just can't think. You've still got plenty of time. Professor Schwartz, I couldn't pass this exam if I had all the time in the world. Copping out? I haven't got one clear thought.
Time's up, Slocum. How'd you do? I did the best I could. Well, let's hope that's good enough. To see Pam. I can't stop you from seeing her somewhere else, but I will not have you in this house. I'm going to wait right here until she talks to me. She's not here. She was supposed to meet me. She didn't show up. I don't know where she is. Please, Mrs. Burns, it's important. I have to see her. All right, come in. I've been worried about you. I'm sorry. I waited for you. I couldn't wait any longer. I told you I'd be there. I... I know. Pam, we have to get married right away. I'm not looking for a husband. Well, you can't just have the baby. Can't I? People do it all the time. Oh, be sensible, will you, for a minute? I know you I you're... tried to get help. Help? You're usually quick. Don't you understand why you're looking at me like that? I did what you wanted me to do. The hardest part was... was finding someone to do it. The rest was very simple. You make all the arrangements. You go to the doctor's office, you pay the cash, then there's a nurse. She takes you up a hall to a dressing room. You put on a gown. You go into another little room. Everything's very clean. It's just like a doctor's office. But it isn't. Then the doctor came in. He said that... He said that it wouldn't hurt. He said that I just rest a few hours. And I walk out of there as if nothing had ever happened. But I saw him smile. Smiling a strange, funny little smile. And I knew it. When I saw that smile, I knew it was murder, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, not for you or for anyone else. Don't touch me. We can't just say goodbye. I don't want you now or ever. Pam, I love you. Love, love at first sight. Get out! Get out! Get out of here! Get out of this house and get out of my life! Get out! Get out! Mother, mother, hold me. Mother, please. 
Get up, Pam. You're no longer a little girl. Get up. Look at me. Pam, look at me. I'm back. What happened? Everything, everything, everything went wrong. Well, what happened? They punched me and poked me like I was a prize pig. They gave me a test and then boom, 4F. 4F, they rejected me. The only sergeant I ran into was a Harvard graduate. Made me feel like a hick. I ended up begging them, begging them to let me in the army. You know what they said? The future leaders of the nation belong in school. I'm sorry, Terragu. I've just been cleaning the place up. When do we have to get out? The new guys are moving in tomorrow. Have you seen Pam? She's dropping out of school. They're going to sell the house and move east. Teragu, I've called. And I've been over there. But she won't even talk to me. Is there anything I can do? I wish there were. I blew it. I had everything, and I just blew it. All by myself. Uh, nothing ever turns out the way you expect, anyhow. You got anything to eat around here? Spaghetti. You know some? Yeah. Spaghetti a la Terragu just don't taste like it used to. Never was too good. That was Rob. How did you do, baby? I took gas. He flushed me. Comment? I was just lucky, I guess. That's possible. <laughs> Professor Schwartz, I think you were right about me. Well, you were right about me. I did play a pretty fair game of baseball once. In fact, I was a shortstop. Thank you, sir. Well, take care of yourself, Slocum. I just came by to get my grades. Schwartz passed me. I could have that fellowship if I wanted. 
I did quite well this semester. I might even make the honor roll. When are you leaving? How's Tara going? He finally gave Debbie a ring. They're getting married in April. What will they do? Well, Debbie's going to finish school. Darago's going to quit and go to work for her old man. Guess what the business is? Used cars. Poor old Terrigo. Wandering around in acres and acres of tail fins. You never guess why the army rejected him. Flat feet. All this time he's been walking around on flat feet and he didn't even know it. Pam, you're everything. It's over, Eddie. Well, talk to me at least. There's nothing left to say. I know how you feel about me, but... I don't blame you. I don't blame anyone. Well, we have to try. We've got to at least try. We wouldn't change. Everything would be exactly the same. We have changed. I wish I could believe you. I can't. students in this university. But only 7,000 are girls. Where would you begin? Well, let's see. Practical shoes, sensible clothes, simple hairdo, definitely not the rah-rah type. You're doing something constructive. Am I warm? I'd give you a C, or maybe a C plus. Education. You're a school teacher type. What's your name? Pam. Pam. I like it. It suits me. Have you ever wanted to be somebody else? No. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Take me now. I've always wanted to be Picasso, Lord Byron, John Glenn, Richard the Lionhearted, and... Uh, Lawrence of Arabia, just to mention a few. But you can't be all of them. Well, sure I can. I get tired of being one, then I move on to the rest. Now then, who do you want to be? Pam, nobody different. Oh, come on, admit it. Haven't you ever in your life wanted to be somebody else? Well... Be honest. You laugh. I'm not laughing. Well, sometimes I like to see myself as a beautiful lady with sad, mysterious eyes and very expensive clothes and lots and lots of secrets and at least one great big tragedy. I'd have an exotic name like Silvano or Monique or Bridget and... That's pretty silly, isn't it? I don't think it's silly at all. You wouldn't. I'm glad you waited for me. Come on, Savannah. There's a great big world out there waiting just for...
it's a gasser. Yes, sir. Believe it or not, I have a fellowship for somebody in this class. A fellowship? Oh, no, it isn't as grand as it sounds. All it means is you'll have another year of school after you graduate this year. A whole year, just to paint and work with me. Well, you know, I'd like nothing better in the world, but my parents can't afford it. I'm gonna have to get a job as soon as I graduate. There's a grant of money. It isn't much, but a single guy ought to be able to make it. Oh, you know, I have the draft to sweat. That army's gonna grab me as soon as I get out. The fellowship will give you a deferment. I'm not sure I'm good enough. Are you interested? What's the catch? Well, you've got to graduate. You've got to get at least a passing grade in all your other courses. All my courses? That's the deal. Look, you think it over, Eddie. If you're really interested... I'm interested. Don't forget to lock up. that this player here is but a fiction in a dream of passion. Hey, wait for me. You said 3.30. Yeah, I know, but I don't have a watch, see? I don't know why I waited. Well, why did you? Perhaps I was curious. Well, my teacher kept me after class. I told him I had an appointment, but uh, you know how it goes. And you knew I'd be waiting. I'd find you if you weren't. There are over 20,000... I said, draw what you see. Nice going. It's not so tough. What is that, Zawatsky? A female fullback? Whistler's mother? Satisfied with that? Now you have a good sense of line, sister. You know what your trouble is, Tony? You have a dirty mind. I wish I could do the female figure as well. well. It's not right. I know what I want, but I can't get it on the paper. Most people are too inhibited for the subject. Well, I must be some sort of a primitive. A primitive is a warrior, a hunter, an artist. That's why Gauguin went to Tahiti, to get away from the corruption of civilization. I hear they have jet service there now. And they've spoiled everything. But the insects are winning. Huh? The insects. They multiply every day by the millions. Hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee with me? Oh, no, thanks, Karen. Not now. With your enthusiasm, they're bound to win. Modern man will be obsolete. I'm sorry about being late, sir, but there was a traffic jam. Spare me the alibi, I'm sure.
stop just in time. Idiot. Plato. I know all about Plato. He was a Greek, principally concerned with the difference between appearance and reality, the endless search of man for his true identity. Look at him go. Every time that crummy bell rings, it's a wonder they aren't punchy. You ever seen a punch drunk co-ed? Women, they study Freud, Marx, and T.S. Eliot and end up standing over a hot stove wishing they looked like Princess Grace. I can't imagine her standing over a hot stove. Well, let's talk about Princess Grace. Get lost. Well, let's talk about the symposium. That's all about love. Love is a serious subject. I tell you, you meet me at the amphitheater at 3.30 and we'll have a serious discussion, okay? I bet you have all the answers. I'm working at it. Lots of luck. Don't forget, 3.30. Look for me when you see me. Hey, wait. You didn't even tell me your name. <laughs> <laughs>